Hey guys, this is Robert from Redneck Brewing. Just want to welcome you all to my new house. And you may remember from my last video, me talking about how I'm going to be installing a home network. Well, here it is. It's already installed. I want to walk you through the steps that I took to uh, install this. Now, my house that I'm currently living in was built in 1985. So their, their internet was not even thought of at the time. So I had to put a little bit of forethought in it. And I'll go into some of the forethought before I installed this and show you how I built it. Now there are three main components to this home network. Uh, two of them are my choosing and one of them is uh, my internet provider. So right there is my modem from Charter. Uh, my Charter line comes in and the first thing it hits is this. Now this is a VPN uh, router. Now what I'm using this VPN router for mainly is for my security. So all of my security for everything that's wired inside of my house is being controlled by this. Now, I've got this attached to an unmanaged switch, but this router does allow me to block MAC addresses, uh, make it uh, to where certain ports uh, only work at certain times. You can only go to certain websites. So I have full control over my network, even though that this is an unmanaged switch. Now, the switch that I chose is a Netgear 24 port gigabit switch. The reason I chose this particular one is because it was on sale the day that I bought it. I bought all the components off of Amazon. <clears throat> this particular one was uh, $25 off the day that I bought it. Otherwise, I would probably have a TP link. Now let's talk about the patch panel that I chose. Now the patch panel is where all the wires that I ran in my house are terminated. Now this is a keystone patch panel. Most, most patch panels, <clears throat> you actually uh, plug the wires into the back of it. But this one is a uh, keystone one. Now if you're not familiar with what a keystone is, <clears throat> this is a keystone and it's also the same uh, thing that you attach to your wall plate. Now this is a single gain or one gain uh, keystone and everything simply just snaps in there. And I'll show you in just a few minutes how that works. Now one thing you need to know about these in particular, the wall plates, they are directional. If you look, there is an up arrow. So that is your up direction. You need to make sure that's turned in there so you can get your keystone snapped in there. But the, the reason that I decided to go with a keystone patch panel is because if any of these connections go bad on me, instead of having to tear the entire wiring scheme out or just considering one of those ports dead all I have to do is pop out that uh, keystone uh, rewire it and put in a new one to me it makes a whole lot more sense now I have 16 data lines running throughout my house I've got five downstairs here in the basement and then all the rest of them are up in the attic dropping down into the walls now I have a den in the basement one bedroom in the basement so the den gets four lines, the bedroom gets one line. I have a master bedroom upstairs, it gets four lines to the TV. Uh, and then I've got four lines around to my living room to the TV there. And the two other bedrooms upstairs, they each get their own line. So now let's talk about some of the tools that you're gonna have to have to put in a network. <clears throat> one of the first things you're gonna have to have is a punch down tool. You'll have to use that for the uh, keystones. I'll show you how to use that in a minute. A stripper. This is a crimper for the RJ45 uh, connections. And this one you don't have to have, but I can tell you from doing this uh, in my first house, this will save you a lot of time and effort tracking down gremlins. Is a tester to test your lines. I'll show you how to use that too. Well, let's start off by stripping off the end of our data line. Now I have found that inch and a half to two inches is about idea to work with. So with this particular stripper, slide it over to my desired length. I go around one time, take the stripper off and pull it off and it's just that easy. So inside of here, you're gonna find a couple of things. You're gonna find a couple of strands of fiberglass here. That is to help pull it through the walls. And first thing you need to do is just Turn that right off. The next thing that you're going to find is the four twisted pairs. So there's your blues, your browns, your oranges, 
and your grains. So pull those back. This Cat 6 cable has a separator uh, to separate the, the twisted pairs. And again, you just want to take a pair of scissors or something and just simply cut that back as, as close to the bottom as you can. Now, before we can wire this, we need to figure out what wiring scheme we're going to use. In data communications and networking, there are two standards. There is an A standard and a B standard. And the wiring is just a little bit different for both. Now, 90% of everybody out there uses the B standard. Now, you can use the A standard, but you're gonna to have to wire your entire house and every data line coming in to the A standard to make it work. So I highly recommend using the B standard. Now let's untwist our twisted pairs. Now that we have our twisted pairs untwisted, let's look at the back of the keystone. As you can see, the wiring scheme for both the A and the B are on the back of the keystone. So all I'm gonna do is simply match the colors per these slots with the correct wire based upon what it's telling me here for the B. We have the wires pressed in the proper slots. We need to terminate these. Now you need to use a push down tool to terminate these. Now <clears throat> these kits actually come with a plastic push down tool, but I can tell you from my own experience, they don't work very well. So this is a push down tool. Now one thing about this particular one and a lot of them that are higher end, they have a cutter on them. So you need to make sure that you have the cutter away from uh, the inside of the uh, keystone. But all you do is you simply just take it Line it up, push it down, and I found if you come back and rock it just a little bit, your wire pulls right off. So let me get the rest of these. So now we have all those pushed down, terminated, and locked into place. The only thing that we like is just to put the uh, strain relief shield on it. And that connection is ready to go. So now let's put the RJ45 connection on there. I've already gotten the wires in the correct order. So the next step is going to be to trim these down. Now I've found about 3 eighths of an inch uh, is perfect. You want to cut these about as straight as you possibly can cut them. So turn to, the, to where the little clip is on the bottom making sure the brown is that way. And then you simply slide it, the wires in the connector, and then slide the wires all the way down to the end. you actually be able to fill them bottom out. And I think we're there do a visual on it it looks like to me that they can go just a little bit further there we go so now that we have that end pushed on there take your crimper slip it into the crimper and crimp it into place and then i like to give a little bit of a tug to make sure it's on there and it's on there Wire. Let's see how we did with the tester. So this end actually detaches so you can put it on one end of the wire and you can go work on the other end of the wire. So let's plug this into the keystone. And let's plug the other end into our tester. And the moment of truth. Wonderful, all of our connections have been made. Uh, we don't have any shorts, we don't have any wires that are crossed, we don't have any splits. So this wire is good and ready to use. So now that we know how to wire everything, let's look at the other side of it. So all the wires are running throughout the house. This is in my living room. I've got four wires coming in and I also have the coax uh, for charger coming in. Now for my wireless, my wireless solution I actually wound up having to use two Wi-Fi's in my house. 
So one of these wires is coming down to the back of that. That is one of two airport extremes. Um, this actually is the repeat. And the main airport extreme is in the laundry, which is about in the middle of my house, which I can see it up here, but I don't get enough strength to be able to surf the internet up here. Well guys, there you go. There's my network in a nutshell and how I put it together. I hope you enjoyed it. I do want to make this uh, disclaimer. I am not an expert in networking. I do use computers on a daily basis, but I'm not into networking. So all that I have done is gone out, figured out what my needs were and found the solutions that fit my needs. So I hope you can take this and, and use it to build the network that you want to use or that will best suit your needs at your uh, house. So thanks for coming along with this adventure with me. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. I do plan on making updates to my network sometime in the future, like building a NAS for it. And I will bring you guys along uh, with that adventure with me also. But guys, thank you for staying with me, and I'll see you all in the next one.